Good morning. Good morning. All right, good morning, morning. We're missing six, so we'll give them a minute or two here and see if they uh, pop on. All righty, morning, morning. We're only missing uh, about four now, but we'll get started and get them uh, caught up at the end if they come. But happy uh, Tuesday to you. Hope all of you are uh, doing well. Uh, we are to week 10, and uh, this week uh, we will review uh, the free enterprise system that we've looked at the last two weeks. We'll focus on what we did last week in terms of regulatory agencies, uh, tax supported safety net programs, and then also the role of the consumer and the role of government uh, in the free enterprise system. We'll review uh, the stock market groups. So remember last week, uh, group one is Tate, Cole, Crystal, Aries, David. Uh, group two is Antonio, Tony, Caitlin, Amir, Luis. And group three is Manny, Ben, Justin, Will, uh, Arelli. And you were to think of two companies that your group might be interested in. So we'll review uh, what a stock is. I will give you username and passwords, and then when we get into our breakout rooms, I'll go over uh, how to log in and then also how to uh, execute that stock trade in the different uh, manners that you can. So in your uh, Canvas, go ahead and go to uh, the econ class, uh, go to module 10 and open up module 10 and we'll review uh, what we will do for the day and get moving.
All right. So um, a couple of things. The last two weeks, we've taken a look at the free enterprise system, which is specific to uh, the United States. And last week, when we took a look at the role of the consumer in government, what two um, roles those groups play, right, in both the public and private sector, the regulatory agencies, right, for the protection of consumers, then the tax supported safety net programs to create a basically floor in which we hope nobody in society goes below. So a couple of things, let's see how much you remember. So I'm gonna share a poll with you and we'll go over the items from last week. All right, so in terms of the role of the consumer, right? What is or what are the roles of the consumer in our free enterprise system? To pay taxes, work jobs, make purchases that illustrate wishes, form interest groups. Okay, so on, uh, on that, right, the role of the consumer, the role of consumer is two part. Your wishes are known with how you spend your money, right, how you purchase your money. There also is the ability, right, to form interest groups. And we talked about lobbies, right? So we talked about the NRA, you talked about other interest groups that are uh, available, right, that are available. So let's go to the role of government. Role of government in our free enterprise system. Protect constitutional rights, provide consumers with information, provide public disclosure laws, protect public with safety laws and regulations. Two more to vote, let's roll. All right, so when we look at this, actually all of those answers, if you remember, are correct. So the role of government is to protect constitutional rights. The role of the government in the free enterprise system is to provide consumers with information. That's why, remember last week, we talked about the labels on the back of food products in grocery stores. There are also public disclosure laws. And then um, in an overarching right goal is to protect the public with safety laws and regulations. So that's why uh, seatbelts are required in cars after the 1950s. Um, there are a number of different things that go on. Um, the two big constitutional rights, anybody remember the two big constitutional rights in the free enterprise system that are protected? The right to enter in and have a contract enforced. And the second one was about what? It begins with a P. We talked about in relation to Pioneer Valley High School, right? The school district wanted to build that land that was owned by somebody else, went through the process of eminent domain, property, two constitutional protections, free enterprise system or property and, and contract rights. All right, question three, what do copyrights protect? 
artistic creations or products? Okay. Copyrights protect products, actual products. Copyrights protect products. So we referenced that with um, the iPhone 12 release last week. That's a specific product. There's a copyright on that. All right. Looking at patents, what do patents protect? Better be 11 for 11 out of this one. Perfect, 11 out of 11. So patents, your uh, 10 out of 11 got that right. Artistic creations. So uh, music, television shows, movies, we talked about the copyright on that and how that was specific to the United States. So that's why NBC is the one that developed this, the sitcom Friends. Friends is shown on other networks, but they need to pay for that. So we talked about um, How I Met Your Mother on CBS, Friends on NBC, Right, How I Met Your Mother can't play on an NBC station without NBC uh, paying for the rights to do that. All right, now into some regulatory agencies. We went over the major regulatory agencies in the United States, Food and Drug Administration. Their regulatory area is going to be what? Food and Drug Administration. One more to vote. Pick your poison there. All right, so Food and Drug Administration, any one of those three are correct. Food and Drug Administration, um, make sure that food is safe, make sure that it is stored safely, it's packed safely, it's prepared safely um, for delivery. Medicine, we talked about that in relation to the vaccines that are in stage three. And then we also talked about makeup. Nobody picked makeup, but makeup is an area of regulation for Food and Drug Administration. All right, Federal Aviation Commission. All right. It's actual Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, sorry. Their regulatory area, airplanes, helicopter, drones, none of the above, all the above. Okay, all 12 have voted. So as I said, I mistyped that. That should be Federal Aviation Administration, FAA. Um, they basically regulate um, after the Deregulation Act 1978 that we talked about two units ago. They are the ones that are in charge of safety and everything related to air travel. So airplanes are under the FAA, helicopters are under the FAA, and then now drones also are under the FAA. So if you chose all the above, you were right. If you chose airplanes, uh, you were right, but realize it's the other two. Um, basically anything that flies in the air. So Federal Communications Commission, 
their regulatory agency uh, or area. Television, radio, internet, none of the above, all the above. All the above, right? Television, radio, internet, basically anything over the airwaves. You can include uh, telephone service as well with Federal Communications Commission. All right, Environmental Protection Agency, their regulatory area, federal land, private land, neither federal or private or both federal and private. Okay, uh, those that chose federal land are right. Those that chose private land are right. Those that chose both are right. So remember that um, the EPA uh, looks for um, any sort of threat to land, to water, to clean air. And that could be from factories in the private sector. Uh, it could be basically anything that would threaten uh, federal land, you have a lot of federal land out in the western part of the United States, but basically anything within the confines of the United States, whether it's private or public, would be the purview of the EPA. And we talked about that in relation to the acid rain. Uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, as we talked about it, their regulatory area, workplace safety in the private sector, workplace safety in the public sector, neither of those or both of those. All right, got all 12 voted there. Uh, correct, both. So public sector and private sector, remember the difference between the two, basically private sector are businesses and firms run for a profit by individuals uh, who have nothing to do really with the government except the regulations and the licenses. The public sector would be a uh, government entity, but they would still be under OSHA rules and regulations in workplace safety and health. All right, last regulatory agency that we talked about last week is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation created by Roosevelt after the Great Depression. They are in charge of banks, stock market exchanges, neither one of those or both of those. Okay, so we've got 11 out of 11. Somehow we dropped somebody. Um, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation is in charge and oversees banks. Stock market exchanges are regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. So FDIC, remember, insures your individual deposits up to $250,000 now um, at an FDIC-insured bank. And that happened after the stock market. All right, so a couple of things. We'll go over uh, copyrights. That seemed to be the only one um, in which we had a number of people 
uh, unsure about that. Just to make sure I didn't miss. Uh, David, did you come in yet? I don't see him. Caitlin, no. Luis, no. And Ariely, no. Okay, so let's go over uh, copyrights and patents real quick. It was good that you got the uh, patents right after seeing about copyrights, but I just want to go over that with you real quick before we talk about your stock market uh, project. So a couple of things um, with copyrights and patents, and we talked about all of the last two weeks really have been specific to the United States. So we talked about uh, specifically with um, the, um, when you talk about copyrights and you talk about patents, we talked about the difference between American uh, television, movies, et cetera, right? Having those things unavailable depending upon uh, who produced that. So we talked about how in Great Britain, their copyright protection is different than it is in the United States. So everything that we talked about is specific to uh, the United States. So when you look at right, patents and copyrights, patents, exclusive rights to produce and sell a product, and we talked about utility patents, design patents, and plant patents. And so that gives the people that develop that the exclusive right to benefit and profit from those things for a specific amount of time. The copyright allows you to, right, exclusively publish your creative works. So that's where we get in the television shows, the movies, et cetera. So you wanna make sure that you know uh, the difference. When we talk about a utility patent, all of these uh, pharmaceutical companies that are developing medicines, they usually get seven years before somebody can have uh, a generic medicine that matches what they produce. So they basically get seven years to do and profit off of that exclusively. Okay, so now to uh, week 10. All right, now to week 10. When we look at week 10 and talk a little bit about uh, the stock market. So I will put you into groups. Each of your groups were, um, each person in your group was to come up with two companies that they may be interested in purchasing. And so in a minute, I'll put you into your group. So group one is Tate, Cole, Crystal, Aries, uh, David. Group two is Antonio, Tony, Caitlin, Amir, Luis. Group three is Manny, Ben, Justin, Will, Ariely. So last week we talked about a stock, right? A publicly traded stock. Uh, we looked at Pepsi and how Pepsi had subsidiaries under, underneath that. And basically it's just a share of a pie. So I'll show you this short clip. We'll review uh, what a stock is and explain that. In the breakout rooms, we'll talk about the two uh, companies that each of you brought. And then I'll give you a username and password and we'll show everybody uh, how you'll execute those trades with what you have. Let me make sure this. About investing is a lot like learning to ride a bike. At first, it may look. In All right. So this is going to go over stocks here, and just review what we talked about last week. Investing is a lot like learning to ride a bike. At first, it may look intimidating or complicated. Dangers seem to be everywhere. That's why it's important to learn the basics and ways you can help minimize risk and protect yourself. After a good amount of practice and learning, you can take the training wheels off and really start riding. Along the way, the roads may change. There'll be good days and bad days. And while learning to ride doesn't guarantee you a spot in the Tour de France, riding a bike could get you where you want to go a little faster. Let's start with the basics and look at one of the most common investments, stocks. A stock represents partial ownership of a company. When you purchase a stock, you're buying a piece or a share of a company. By owning a share, you own a small fraction of the company's assets and have a claim on its future earnings. 
there are two ways you can make money by investing in stock. The first is through stock appreciation, when a stock you own goes up in value. If an investor bought the stock at one price and the price went up, the investor could then make money by selling the stock to another investor at the higher price. The second way is through a dividend. This is a periodic payment issued by some stocks. A dividend is a way for a company to give a portion of its earnings to shareholders. Here's an example of how stocks work. Suppose there's a company called Bull Flag Cycling. This company makes bikes, really good bikes. The bikes are so good, in fact, the company wants to expand, so it can sell more bikes to people all around the world. To do this, the company needs to raise money, also known as capital. There are a few ways this company could do this. It could take out a loan, but that would mean taking on a significant amount of debt. Or it could issue shares of stock. By issuing stock, which is called going public, the company can raise money without going into debt. Instead, it sells shares of ownership and a claim on future earnings to investors. So let's meet a typical investor. Our investor is someone who has a little extra cash. He's looking for an investment that has the potential to offer better returns than a savings account. And he is willing to accept the higher risks of investing in a stock. He thinks Bullflag Cycling is a promising company that's likely to grow. Because of this, he thinks buying a share would be a good investment. So how much does a share cost? Suppose the company decides to raise $1 million, and it decides to issue 1,000 shares of stock. Because each share represents a fraction of the company's worth, and there are 1,000 shares, each share represents 1 1,000th of full flag cycling. Because the company is raising $1 million, at the initial public offering, or IPO, each share would be initially valued at $1,000. Let's suppose the price doesn't change after the IPO. So our investor purchases a single share on the open market through his online stockbroker for $1,000. Now, let's see what could happen to his investment. If the company does well and profits increase, the value of the company is likely to go up. As a result, the stock price may increase as well. Assuming the price of the stock goes up, our investor could now turn a profit by selling his shares to another investor in the stock market. However, if the company's ventures don't go as planned, its value could decrease, and so could the stock price. If this happens, our investor could lose money if he decides to sell at the current price. When it comes to investing in the stock market, the basic goal is to buy when prices are low and sell when prices are high. But stocks in the stock market don't always go up. Sometimes they stay the same, and sometimes they go down. And sometimes prices change quickly. Because of this, stocks are considered riskier than other historically safer investments such as bonds or CDs. However, investors keep coming back to the stock market. Why? Because with this increased risk comes the potential for greater returns. Savvy investors take precautions to try to minimize risk, like creating an investing plan, adding diversity to their portfolios by investing in a variety of companies, putting money in other investments besides stocks, and learning trading strategies for up, down, and sideways market. All right, so that was a quick review of stocks. You were to look at two possible companies to invest in. And you're going to share that with your group in a second. And I'm going to go over with you exactly what you'll do. So remember, it's stockmarketgame.org. And I'll give all of this to you again in your breakout room. But basically, each of your groups has been given $100,000 to play this competition. So we'll look at my account here. I'll be group seven in this group. Um, We've talked about, right, you've been given $100,000. We've talked about the interest and dividends from just that initial deposit of money. So each account is already up $70 a weekend because it officially started. Um, there are three types of trades that you can make. We're going to look at stocks this week. Later, we'll look at mutual funds and bonds. And so we'll talk about the different ways that you can invest that. But today, after your group decides, you're gonna basically make two trades. And so when you select trade a stock, and as I said, I'll go over this with you, you can see your options, buy, sell, sell short, short cover. And we'll talk about these two later, but buy and sell, right now we don't have any, so we have to buy. 
and then you can pick any company that you want. So let's say that you wanted to invest in Ford Motor Company. You can invest in Ford Motor Company. Their stock symbol is a F and you wanted to buy 100 shares of that. You're gonna put that in. There are two types of orders, a market order, which executes your trade specifically at the time that it's put in or a limit order. So a limit order would be, uh, if you know Ford stock is selling for 869 a share, if you put a market order in, it's gonna buy it no matter what it has gone up or down. If you put in a limit order, if you put in a limit order, you could put a limit and say, I don't wanna pay more than $10 a share for this stock. Once you put in your stock symbol, the order type and the number of shares, you can preview that trade. You can see that at the last closing, uh, at the end of business yesterday, it was 759 a share. So you can see here how much that is going to cost you, what you're gonna have left. And if you want to, you can reconfirm uh, your trade. You have to put in your password and confirm trade. Or you can edit trade. Maybe you only want 50 shares and you can see what 50 shares uh, would cost you from that. So that is how you will do that. As I said, I will break you into your breakout rooms I'll give each of you your um, username and password, and you'll execute uh, two trades today. So it's stockmarketgame.org, uh, group one, make sure I get this right. <laughs> Okay, so group one is going to be Tate. Go with Cole, he's not here. I know Crystal is still here. David is not. Group two, Antonio, Tony, Caitlin's not here. Amir. Group three. It's going to be Benny, Justin, and Aries. You're in group one. Okay. So I will open up the breakout rooms. Each of you are in your groups. I'll come in the breakout room. Uh, we'll go over this again specifically with your group. I'll give you the username and password, and we should be set. Let me make sure I've got enough minutes so it doesn't close on you. Make sure you hit accept. We'll come in and get you started. All righty, how you guys doing? Good. There you go. Okay, so in the chat room, I'm gonna put up, even though I gave it to you last week, um, the web address. So it's stockmarketgame.org. And then you have a username and password that is specific to your group. Nobody else is gonna have it. You'll want to write that down somewhere as well uh, usually when we're in person, I just have you write it in the notebook. So it'll say team login username, um, CLA underscore 28, and those are two Zs, and then 314. Your password is EBS T7855. All right. And so um, what are the two companies that you looked at in the past week? Um, I looked at some like airlines. Okay. Anyone in the and, and uh um and a couple in the the car industry. Okay. Any any specific airlines or car companies? Um, no, just like general. Okay. Just like no, that's okay. So let me show you. Hopefully, you can see this. Can you see this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So um, remember that that finance.yahoo.com, uh, if you take a look at, uh, let's say you wanted to see if Southwest Airlines was available. So if you type in Southwest, it's right there. So its symbol is LUV, and you can get your information from there. So it's forty. It's trading at forty forty six a share right now, up sixty one cents um, today. I, I'm sorry, your your screen is still at the stock market trader. Okay. Sorry, I, I thought that's all right. It's good to tell me. How about now? All right. Yep. There it is. Perfect. Okay. So I went to finance.yahoo.com, the one I told you about last week. Um, forty forty seven a share, up sixty two cents. And then here is your a month out. You can change it six months out. So you can see that right down here during the closure, stock really fell, but now it seems to be climbing. So if that is one that you're interested in buying, uh, you could do LUV. So basically, you're going to have to do two trades a week. Obviously, at the beginning, you're going to have to do two buys. So you can look up any of the car companies or airline companies that you were thinking about purchasing and then use the username and password, log in, uh, make those trades, and then you'll satisfy the requirement for the week. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go to group two and get them set. I'll come back and see if you have any trouble. Don't forget that you have to click buy. So after you go to enter a trade, you have to go to stock trade, and don't forget to click on buy. That's why I got that error the second time I showed up. Okay, I'll come back to you in just a second. I got to get to uh, the other ones. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Okay. Pretty good. Did you guys come up with two companies? Yeah. Okay, what, well, give me one of them. One of them you're thinking about. Um, Tesla. Tesla, okay. So let me share, uh, I'm gonna, in the chat room right now, I'm gonna send you uh, the, okay, so that's to everybody. So it is stockmarketgame.org. That's the website. Your guys' uh, password is only gonna be specific to you. This is how you're gonna log in. All right. So there is your username and password. You wanna copy and paste and write that down somewhere. And then uh, let me show you how you'll execute a trade. All right, so if you remember, right, when you log in, you guys are gonna be group two. All right, so your group two is right here. You're gonna to go to trade, enter a trade, go to stock trade. Don't forget to click buy. Uh, Tesla, I believe is T-S-L-A. If you don't know what the company is, you can go to, as I said, right, finance.yahoo.com. And there it is, Tesla. All right, you can see it's down 640 today, so it might be a good time to buy. Um, once you're there, right, you can put that in, and let's say that you wanted to buy 10 shares, you can preview the trade. 430.83 right now, it would cost you $4,308.30. You have to put your password in to confirm that. But you need to make two trades today. You think you can do that? Yes. Okay, perfect. So make your two trades. I'm going to go to group three and make sure they're set. And then uh, I'll come back and check with you. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Um, did you come up with two companies that you may want to buy stock in? Yes. Okay, uh, give me one of them. Uh, Keurig, Dr. Pepper. Okay, Keurig or Dr. Pepper? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
I'm going to share my screen with you in just a second. But first, in the chat room, I'm going to send you uh, the website. So remember, it's stockmarketgame.org. And then your guys' username and password, this will get you into your group. You'll want to write this down. So there's your username and password just sent to you. And then this is what you'll do here. So um, two things. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay. So stockmarketgame.org. Um, you would log in using that username and password. You guys are group three. So let me bring your portfolio up. Once you log in, all right, once you log in, you'll see all of your information here. You're going to go to trade, enter a trade, stock trade. Don't forget to click buy. And then we have to get the symbol for either one of those companies that you may be interested in. So uh, what did you say, Keurig and Dr. Pepper? No, they're both together. Oh, okay. So Keurig, I don't even know how to spell it. Is that right? Or does it have an H? Uh, it's K-E-U-R-I-G. K-E-U-R. Oh, there it is. Okay, look at that. I didn't know they were together. You learn something every day. Okay, so that's their stock symbol. Their stock is selling for $29.49 a share, right? And you can see how it's gone today. You can see how it's gone last six months. You can see how it's gone the last year. If that's what you want to buy, then you're going to come here and you're going to put in uh, KDP right here. All right. How many shares you want? Maybe 50 and then preview the trade. That'll cost you $1,460 uh, with the fees and commission. It's going to be $1,463.54. Put your password in to confirm the trade, and then you can make the trade. But you want to make two trades today. Two trades today. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll come back and check on you in just a second. All right, howdy, howdy, gang. Uh, somebody, uh, who made the, who's made the first trade for your group? Did somebody enter that in? Um, no, but probably, no, no. probably Ford, I think. Yeah. Okay. So um, either, either one of you, if you want, can, you can share your screen. Um, so let me, Tate, I'm going to go to you. Since okay, you're the first one. We'll have you share. And I just want to walk through with you and make sure that you're able to execute that. It's up to you in terms of what you want to buy. But yeah, just hold on. Let me get the. Let me get it up. Um, share screen, right? Yes, sir. Share. Is it up? Uh, it's coming up. It'll take just a second. Perfect. Okay. So if you click login, there you go. All right. So then from the chat room, if you want, you can copy and paste that. Yeah. It's going to be an underscore. There yeah. you go. Should I save the password? I would. Okay. I don't think they're going to get into your device. I think you'd be all right. Perfect. So then if you go up to trade with the pull down arrow. So enter trade. Enter trade, yes.
Uh, go to stock trade. And then what was the company that your group's most interested in? Ford. Ford, okay. So don't forget to click buy because we have no shares yet. Buy. Yep. And then stock symbol is F. Yep. Uh, you would probably want to do it at the market. I would do it right at the market price right now. And then how many uh, shares did your group want to buy? Um, I'm not sure I can go back and look at that. Yeah, it's about seven, it's about 763 a share right now. So I would do, you know, I mean, you're in the competition for two months. I would do somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 200 shares probably to start off. 100 to 200 shares? Yes. So like $1,400? Sure. So does 200 sound fine for the group? Yeah, I'm good with that. All right, look at that. So I don't, I don't have to do anything for limit price? No, that would only be if you did a limit price, you would click on limit and then the limit price would be, I don't want to pay more than $8 a share. But you want to, you want to buy. So you can go ahead and click on preview trade. So uh, with commissions, it's fifteen twenty one forty eight. The actual cost of the stocks will be fifteen eighteen. You can see how much buying power you'll have left. So all you have to do is re-enter your password in. And then confirm trade. There you go. You're we set. bought a stock. You bought a stock. So your group just has to do one more, and that's all you have to do for the week. All right. All right. We'll see you in a couple minutes. See ya. Yep. Hey, Mr. Grok. Hey, what's up? It's not letting me log in with the information you gave me. Okay, so let me uh, resend it. You guys are group two, right? Correct. Okay. Um, don't forget that uh, after the CLA, it is an underscore. Okay. Yeah, I tried it with underscore and without. Okay. So if not, I can bring you back in just a second because the breakout room is going to go. So oh, I would, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the breakout room, or in the chat, I would copy and paste those. Yeah, okay. That's, okay. A, that's what I was doing. Okay. So anyway, I'll come, I'll come uh, back to you after. But it's about to close. I need to go to group three. So okay. don't worry. If it doesn't work, I'll get you here. All right, so I think everybody's back now. Um, group two and three, we may need to uh, reconvene real quick uh, with you guys at the end to make sure that your uh, trades were executed in terms of problems that you may have had or not had. Next thing I want to uh, go over with you is a review of the unit. So if you looked at your module 10, uh, I had set up the review game in the page above, above the uh, stock video. So it is a sign for you. And just like the other units, you can practice this as many times as you want. Uh, but this here would be another good review of not only the regulatory agencies, the role of consumer, the role of government, uh, the safety net programs, but also in terms of our free enterprise system, public and private sector, public good, private good. So we'll play this review game together. 
um, check and make sure that you're set in terms of the unit test. And then I'll check with uh, groups two and three. Uh, I know group two was having a trouble with their login. So we'll check their information to make sure I did that right from there. So go ahead and go to, uh, for you, kahoot.it and I'll send you uh, the game code. So if you go to kahoot.it, I'll send you the game code here in just a second. Okay, so I'll send this in the uh, chat room as well, but your um, game pen number is 412-1636, and that'll get you into the review game. So let me send that through the chat room. This will go to everyone. So Kahoot.it, game pen you'll enter be 412-1636. We'll go over the last two weeks that we had for this unit. All right, we've got everybody up. All right, can you see the screen okay? Yes. All right, which of the following is a negative effect of government regulation? All right, government regulation generally tends to increase the cost of the good or service that is being regulated or the industry that is being regulated. So that would be a negative uh, to government regulation. All right, the concept that people may decide what and when they want to buy and sell is known as what? Voluntary exchange. So it's always, it goes back to that same example that I've always used, right? You've got $10 in your wallet or your purse for lunch. The government doesn't tell you where you can go to lunch. The government doesn't tell you what you have to buy for lunch. You have the freedom, right, to voluntary exchange your $10 for what you want to eat. All right, laws requiring companies to provide full information about their products are called what? This gets into regulation. Public disclosure laws. Public disclosure laws. Ooh, we're rolling. All right, giving consumers the freedom to make their own economic choices is the fundamental purpose of.
There you go. Free enterprise system. Free enterprise system is what we have here in the United States. God, Manny with a streak of four. Rolling. All right. American free enterprise system is driven by the There you go. Desire for profit. Profit is what um, allows people to continue to innovate and develop, just like we talked about last week with the iPhone 12, right? Why does Apple come out with an iPhone 12? It's because they're going to have the rights to sell that exclusively, uh, and they're going to benefit from the profits of that. And then you can see, right, sort of incentives that go along with that. But basically, the free enterprise system that we have in this country is driven by that desire for profit. Companies and individuals who own business and, and firms want to make as much money as possible. That's why they're going to innovate and give the best products possible so that they can profit off of that. All right. Why are patents and copyrights important? Provide inventors the possibility of making profits. So that there, as we have said, right, goes into what helps the free enterprise. Okay, the total value of all final goods and services produced in a particular economy is called what? This is our number one economic indicator. Gross domestic product, good. So gross domestic product are all new goods and services produced in a country in a year. And that generally comes out on a quarterly basis. So every three months, we'll get an update on the GDP. That is our best economic indicator of whether we're growing, contracting, or staying the same. And Benny was seven in a row. All right, the process used to produce a good or service such as using a robotic device to assemble cars. Technology, right? Only one way to get outside of the frontier on a production possibilities curve, and that is an increase in population, an increase in resources, or an increase in technology. All righty, uh, macroeconomics. The study of decision, right? The entire economy. Macroeconomics is the entire economy. So that would generally be country by country. What is one way the federal government does not help stabilize the economy? Government does not fix prices. Government does not fix prices. In our free enterprise system, the um, businesses and firms are the ones that set prices, and the consumers vote with their dollars. All right, a situation in which the market does not distribute resources efficiently is considered to be what?
Market failure. A market failure is when uh, there is not a free exchange of goods and services between uh, households and firms. Somewhere there's been a breakdown. All right, the part of the economy that involves the transactions of individuals and businesses. Very good, private sector. So private sector transactions of individuals and businesses for a profit. Remember the private sector is run for a profit. Uh, which of the following is a public good? Good. Military. Internet provider. Internet provider. Those companies. Uh, Xfinity, Comcast, those are for profit. A construction company uh, is for profit. A private garden, right? It's got the word private in there. So um, that would be also a private good. Military paid for by the government. Which of the following statements about externalities is false? So which one is false? Only the private sector can create both positive and negative externalities. Positive and extra, uh, negative externalities can happen in the, all right, private sector as well as the public sector. So even we talked about um, the building of Rigetti High School. Rigetti High School is a public sector good. There are still positive and negative externalities from that, right? The traffic in the morning might be negative. The, um, basically the site of extra places, right? You have or to youth football, you have a number of outside groups that get to use the facilities here, that would be a positive externality. So it doesn't matter if it's public or private, they both can have things that happen outside that original exchange. What is a critical factor in determining whether something gets produced as a public good or not? What's the number one factor? Number one factor is whether something, every public good, every example of a public good is a market failure. Uh, a number of you put cost, and cost would be the second biggest reason why. Um, so every externality um, that comes from a public sector, private sector good, if there has been a failure in the market, right, where for whatever reason it's not going to be provided, then it generally is a public good coming from the public sector. Cost usually is going to be um, the second biggest factor in that. So I would say both green and blue, uh, you are going to be right on that. An income level below that which is needed to support families or households is known as what? Good. Poverty level. Poverty level is the minimum, right, the floor at which we want people in our society to be. Generally, those people that are in danger of falling below the poverty level are given sources of welfare. So hopefully that's why those in green chose that. Uh, welfare is...
government aid to the poor, right? All of our tax supported safety net programs is government aid to the poor. Crystal moving up. All right, what is one advantage of our free market society? One disadvantage. Wealth is spread unevenly throughout society. So there's a great disparity between the billionaires and those at the bottom in terms of the wealth. So that would be a disadvantage to our free enterprise system. All right, cash transfers are. So we talk about tax supported safety net programs. Cash transfers are. Cash transfers are direct payments of money, all right, to people that are eligible for that. Antonio with a streak of three. All right, subsidized housing would be an example of what type of tax supported safety net program? in-kind benefit. So there's two types of programs in the welfare system, cash transfer, which is direct payments, and an in-kind benefit. Subsidized housing basically means that you get a certificate and you're able to rent something at lower than what it would normally cost you. In-kind benefits are There you go. Good or service provided for zero dollars or at a reduced amount, right? In-kind benefits generally don't involve full cash payments for the tax supported safety net program. What is one overall aim of the temporary assistance for needy families? So remember this was changed. We talked about this under the Clinton administration. Right, to move people from welfare dependence to the workforce. So we talked about that, even though it was two weeks ago, right? Clinton administration, Democrat, the Congress was supported um, or basically controlled by the Republicans. They had made the deal with Clinton. Uh, we will give you money for job training, for education, but we're going to put a time limit on how long these uh, families or specific people can be on the federal assistance program. All right, which of the following is not a cash transfer program? Okay, good, food stamp program, right? Where you are given All right, legal aid provided by a government agency is an example of. So you're arrested, you're arraigned, you're indicted for a crime, they provide you with an attorney. In kind benefit, right? They don't give you cash to go out and look for your own attorney, they provide one for you. So that is an example of an in-kind benefit. All right, what is the purpose of workman's compensation?
Right. Workman's compensation, those people that are injured on the job. All right, which sector of the economy is the school system? Great, there you go. So remember, when we talk about private and public sector, private sector, its goal is a profit. Public sector, right, providing things to a society that would not otherwise be provided because of the cost, because of the inability to provide something like that. It's similar, right? We talked about Vandenberg Air Force Base, City of Santa Maria, right? The City of Santa Maria doesn't provide for its own defense, right? F-35 fighter is going to cost millions of dollars. The city doesn't have that type of money. The federal government does. All right. So when you're talking about public and private, remember the thing to keep in your mind, is it for profit or not? So when we talk about orchid burn, which sector of the economy? Orchid Burger is a restaurant, right? That's in the business to make money. It is private sector. So private and public sector doesn't mean who it's available for. It means what is its purpose? If its purpose is to make a profit, it's probably gonna be private sector. All right, Mustang water slides. What sector of the economy? Private sector. Mustang water slides, private sector. It's run for profit. Oh, look at that, we got some movement. All right, fire department belongs to which sector of the economy? Very good public sector, fire department, police, those would all be examples of public sector. Any of your city operated entities is generally going to be public sector. Crystal was seven in a row. All right, your economics textbook is a public or private good? Public good, very good. Public good, provided for by the school system. Okay, so uh, going over a couple of this, um, here are uh, some questions that were uh, missed. Um, when we talk about what is one overall aim for temporary assistance for needy families, that there, right, that there was the Clinton administration making a deal with the Republicans, putting a time limit on the length that somebody could be on assistance um, in exchange for workforce and education money. Uh, subsidized housing, um, is an in-kind benefit. So it is not a direct payment of cash. There's two types of welfare. Direct payment of cash where they give you the cash and you decide what to do with the money or they give you an in-kind benefit which is a reduction in the price or a benefit. Uh, income level, as we said, the poverty level is the floor. The poverty level is the floor that we want people in society to be there. Um, critical factor in determining whether something gets produced as a good or not Everything comes to whether it was a market failure. Every public good, and this will be on your exam, every public good is an example of a market failure. Second biggest factor is gonna be the cost, right? Talking about Vandenberg Air Force Base, F-35 jet, things like that. 
Uh, part of the economy that involves the transactions of individuals and businesses is the private sector. You got $10 in your wallet, $10 in your purse. Where are you going to go eat lunch at? Uh, one way the federal government does not help stabilize the economy, the government does not get involved in telling people what to sell things for. They don't get involved in telling the people in the private uh, sector what price. They don't set prices. Uh, patents and copyrights are important because it protects people who come up with inventions or better technology to be able to profit off of that, right? And we use the Apple iPhone as the example of that right, the Apple iPhone 12, the release of that last week. Uh, legal aid provided by a government agency is an in-kind benefit. They don't give you money to go get your own lawyer, they provide you a lawyer. Uh, as I said, in-kind benefits are basically um, goods and services given to you, not cash, uh, which the following is a public good, the military. All of these others are run for profit. So when you're trying to determine between public and private, Again, is it being produced for a profit, yes or no? If it's yes, it's probably private. If it's no, it's not for profit, it's public. Um, American free enterprise is driven by this desire for profit. Uh, and then looking the concept that people may decide what and when they want to buy and sell, that's voluntary exchange, right? You vote with your dollars. We talked about that last week. And then what is the purpose of workman's compensation is to protect um, and provide for people that are hurt on the job. Anybody want me to go over any of those items there? Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, those 30 questions um, will be on your test. The review game is available to you to play as many times as you want before you take the unit test over free enterprise. Um, the free enterprise test is going to be unit three. And that's available again, if you log into School City, it's your six digit ID with your network um, or tablet password uh, to get in. Now, the only other thing that you need to make sure that you have done is to make sure that your two trades have been recorded. So, Group two and group three, I'll double check with you. I know group two had some issues with that, but you wanna make sure, so example, if we go to, make sure that you're able to see this. All right. So two different trades of stock is all your group has to do. Um, if you look at group one, let me show you what they did here. Uh, they traded Ford, all right? So group one traded Ford. You can double check and make sure that your transaction went through if you go to transaction notes. Tomorrow, after the trade has been recorded, when they go in, it will show up there. So Ford, 200 shares at market price, and that was executed uh, at 928 our time. So those of you um, in group two and group three, I want you to hang on so I can make sure that you know the process and get through that because I don't see it in your transaction notes. Everybody will want to uh, review that game uh, that we just did together as many times as you want before you take the test. The review game will be available until noon next Monday, and then you wanna take the exam at that time. The end of the grading period is the 30th of October. Everything from this six week period is still available to you for full credit. So if there's anything you're missing, you can reach out to me as well. Even though it may be closed or say that the due date in Canvas is passed, all you have to do is go directly to it. And I can send you that link if you don't have it. So uh, those of you in group two, uh, Antonio, Tony, Caitlin, Amir, Luis, Manny, Ben, Justin, Will, Ariely, hang on. And I wanna make sure that you're able to proce uh, process your trades. Group one, you need to make one more trade. I only see Ford there. So together as a group, you wanna make sure that you get that done before next week. And then obviously if you have any other questions or concerns, you can hang on uh, and we'll get that taken care of.
Any other questions in a general sense? Okay, so um, we'll start with group two. Group two, were you able to get in? I was. Okay, perfect. And so um, you know how to hit buy and then select your stock and then confirm that? Yes. Okay, perfect. So if you have any questions, I'll be here. Just let me know. Um, but you need to uh, trade two different stocks. Hey, Mr. Grok. Yes. So um, it didn't let me log in, so. Okay. So I'm going to have you share your screen with me. All right. And I can see what the problem is. So that's the info. Okay. Uh, go back. See. See. Uh, click on the username. Uh, hit your backspace button right there. Now. Now hit login. Oh. Okay. Save. That's what it is. All right. Save. Save your. Uh, there you go. That's why. All right. Thank you. Perfect. You bet. Okay. Uh, Manny. Ben. Your guys' group. How are you guys on getting logged in? I'm logged in. So okay. The what? I'm logged in too, but so do we just does each person just need to choose two uh, trades? Uh, no, you can do it as a group. Your your group just needs to have two trades, so you can have one person do one, and you can do one. It doesn't matter. You can decide as a group because I'm going to give you time in class. So oh, okay. In class, you, you'll be able to have those trades, but you just want to make sure that you do two different companies today. Okay. Okay? Okay. I was trying to, like, message my group. Yes. But none of them responded. So I, I, I decided on our second um, second trade, and I already did it. So does that mean I'm good for the week? Um, yeah, and you are group one, right? I think so, yeah. Okay, so let me see if it shows up. Yeah. Should be good, good yep. year tire. Yep, I see it. Yep, you're set. Right. The group's done. All right, sweet. Thanks. Yep, take it easy. We'll see you later. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm having trouble with doing the trade right, right now. Okay, so I'm going to have you share your screen with me and I'll walk you through it. Do you see it or? Yep, I can. Okay. Okay, go ahead and click on preview trade. See what, it's, see what it shows me. What, what's the company you're trying to do? Oh, oh cured. There it is. Okay, so then go down where it says re-enter your, your trade, uh, re-enter your password. So I type in the password that you gave me? Yeah, but it looks like you can just click on that. Just click I, on the first one there. I don't know which one it is, though. Because I did, okay. it, did it and it didn't work one time. Okay, so click on... All right, we'll just retype the password then. Confirm? Yep. Okay, so it says it's the wrong password. So your password is the KXR one. All right, there you go. It worked. Okay. Yep, and so your group needs to make one more. Okay. All right, Amir, Benny, you guys got anything? Well, right now I'm just trying to figure out like how to actually um do the trade for the our stock. Okay, so I'll make you co-host here real quick.
Okay, so our stock we picked was Tesla. So okay. are we supposed to do it from here or? Uh, I don't know where you're at. Can you maximize that? Yeah. Your tablet. There you go. Okay, so go up, go up to where it says trade with the down arrow. Enter a trade. Enter stock trade. Click on buy. Uh, in the first spot right there, uh, type in, no, you don't have to search for it, just type it in. Uh, you have to hit okay. Okay, then TSLA. Then go down to number of shares. And then um, we agree to do wanted to buy? Um, one. Okay, you got to do at least 10. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, at least 10 shares? Yeah. Um, Part of the game. That's right. Just put in 10 so you can okay. see how it works. Then hit preview trade. You have $100,000. It's only going to cost you $4,000. Then in the, okay. in the, in the uh, spot right there, you're going to put your password in. And then confirm trade. And that's it. Trade is confirmed. So your group's got to do one more trade. So of, of a different stock, right? Of a different stock, correct. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for your help. Right. Yep, you bet. We'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye. Bye.